Hi, I'm Hull History Nerd, and today I'm going to be looking at something that might be in danger of disappearing forever. The remains of the old Railway Street goods station, here by the marina. So I've already discussed the history of the Manor House Street station, which was Hull's very first railway station here by Humber Dock next to the marina. But it's recently come to my attention that this whole area around the marina is going to get redeveloped with housing. Right on the spot of the Manor House Street station and its later replacement, the massive railway street goods station built in the 1860s, of which this wall is pretty much all that's left. This whole area is riddled with industrial history. There are railway lines running through the, the cobbled streets around the marina. There are small wooden truck turntables. And of course, this wall, which is pretty much, as I said, all that's left of the railway street goods station. And I don't normally do videos like this, but when I looked at all the concept art for this development, nowhere did I see the cobbles or the railways or this wall and I thought it was a good point to revisit this whole area just to emphasize how important a piece of heritage this actually is for Hull and what a big part of our identity this is so that rather than demolishing it hopefully they can try and at least showcase some of it Back before the 1840s, Hull didn't have a railway. That is to say, it didn't have a big steam-hauled railway line. But these lines embedded in the cobbles, however, do predate the coming of the railway to Hull, and they were used to carry wagons hauled by horses, an easy way to get cargo moved from ship to warehouse. These tiny wooden turntables were designed to turn a single horse-drawn wagon and send it off towards the row of vast warehouses along Kingston Street. Hull was doing very well for itself during the 1830s when the idea of a railway from Leeds to Hull was first floated, and investors in Hull scoffed at the idea of a railway, refusing to back it, forcing the line instead to terminate at Selby. However, as the 1830s rolled on, Hull began to experience pressure and competition from a resurgent Grimsby and from the new kid on the block, the new town of Ghoul, which sprang up from nowhere during the 1820s as a purpose-built dock town. Ghoul was designed and paid for by the Air and Calder Navigation Company, a canal network, as a way to bypass Hull's docks and its handling fees for valuable shipments of coal from the massive South Yorkshire coal fields and the shipping of timber for pit props to the mines. Hull was quite indignant about this, and the corporation tried many tricks, including trying to find ships that passed Hull travelling along the Humber towards Ghoul, which obviously didn't work out. In the end, the railway idea was refloated, and the Hull and Selby Railway Company was born to complete the route that was begun during the 1830s. It was right here on the quayside at Humber Dock that Hull's very first railway station was built, the Manor House Street Station. And it consisted of two buildings. One was the passenger terminus and the other was the goods station. It didn't take long for them to realise that a single small goods station was not going to be sufficient for the needs of Hull's entire dock input and output. And it, within only a few years, a second goods station was built just to the south of the passenger terminus. And in the 1840s, the titanic figure of George Hudson came across and dominated the Hull and Selby railway line. He made them an offer they couldn't refuse. He offered to rent the line from them and take all the worry and cost of running the railway 
away from them. All they needed to do was sit back and cash the cheque every month and they were good as gold. Naturally, the Holland Selby Railway, having realised just how expensive running a railway was, pretty much snapped his hand off at this deal. And Hudson set about transforming this line very, very quickly. Within only a few years of his renting the line, he decided that Hull required a grander, more opulent railway station than one here down by the docks, where often very blue language would have been used by the dockers and the sailors. Not the sort of thing that the well-to-do of Hull wanted to hear when they were wandering off to get a train to go and see Selby or Leeds. So he built this opulent, magnificent station, Paragon Station, on what was then the very western edge of the town. He built new cords of track to connect the Bridlington branch and the Selby branch to the new station. And the old passenger terminus here became, you guessed it, another good station. When Hudson fell from grace at the end of the 1840s, the opulent Paragon station became known in the press as Hudson's Folly, and the line's running was taken over by the North Eastern Railway, the massive company made up from the indebted remains of Hudson's empire, and which would become one of the largest and most powerful networks in the country. They set about redeveloping the area in the 1850s, demolishing the original Manor House Street station and building one huge goods station, the Railway Street Depot, in 1858. These walls, still standing, are the remains of this massive building where a huge chunk of Hull's freight was processed and placed onto or taken off wagons. The best thing about being here for me, this is where it all began, this is where it all started. Over the years, this would become the nexus of a huge web of industrial land. In fact, one of the biggest railway and dock complexes in Britain, if not the biggest. With the advent of Albert Dock and then later St Andrew's Dock and the explosion of Hull's fishing industry, the railway rose to meet it at every hurdle the motive power depot at Dairy Coats, the Priory Yard sidings that stretched almost all the way to Hesel. This stretched almost six miles to the west and was almost half a mile thick in places. And it employed tens of thousands of people in the smokehouses, in the warehouses, on the railways, on the ships, by the dockside. It was one of Britain's most powerful industrial areas. It contained the in and out coming goods yards for a whole powerful port, one of the third biggest ports in Britain. And it was this, this infrastructure, Railway Street Goods Station and everything that came after it to the west that made Hull one of the most potent industrial centres in Britain. It was an artery feeding the rest of the country. That's how important this place is. It played a huge part in the development of our industrial heritage and the greatness of Hull as an industrial city, as a port city. And it began here, right here. And now all that's left of the Railway Street goods yard is this old wall dating back to the 1860s. And it would be such a shame if we were to lose this. Hull now more than ever needs some kind of reminder of its prior greatness and how we, we haven't always just been the butt of bad jokes in the media or a place where people can take the mick out of our accent. We used to be an actual northern powerhouse, not some fake promise from a government that's not intending to do anything about it and making up buzzwords. Hull was a northern powerhouse and we should remember that and we should celebrate that. And if there's anybody watching who's got any kind of power over this development, please do something with these walls. Don't just bulldoze them. Renovate them, tidy them up, put placards showing the history of the site on them. Make it an attraction. Celebrate the history. Don't let it disappear under the blade of a bulldozer. <laughs>